going to help. Yeah. And Kaisa plus Nocturne, possible dive follow-ups there uh, on the Rakan engage. So TSM, not too shabby with the synergies. They've been able to build for themselves, but it just looks like a Rift held in hand. We may see the first big play from EG and the snowball start to actually pop That's off. the aggressive nature of the match that we keep highlighting for the Yone picks into it. Chime. Oh, great, great look by Chime. Good rogue timer as well, and the paranoia, the first Rift use. 3.2K, the gold lead for Evil Geniuses and Revenge. Oh. 2v1, Uki Nocturne Ultimate. I don't think he'll even need it. He can just walk in in line. Hanser is still low, but Revenge with the fear cannot do anything. And it's another pickup for Boogie on the top side of the map. This is solid stuff from TSM. You know, the laning phase wasn't going their way necessarily, but Hanser in terms of their it. macro and team fighting, they might be able to loop around here. Teleport's coming in from both Revenge and Hanser. Glacial Prison right into the middle. Ruby goes golden with the stasis. And it's Evil Geniuses that secure the dragon, but Chime, masked by the darkness of Paranoia, Ooh. finds a nasty flank onto the back line of Evil Geniuses. But do they have the damage to back it on? Up. Boogie is forced to flash. The shutdown goes over the revenge. <laughs> and evil geniuses find vengeance and strike true into the heart of TSM. Oh my Even goodness. a smite on that dragon. Went down to one HP and Varus got it. <laughs> but don't uh, let EG continue to increase as quickly as possible. Try and minimize your losses. Boogie's pretty far from the rest of his teammates, so. Let's see, for uh -oh. TSM. Bait sealed over the wall, looking for the damage calculation. Will the soul unbound Mark do enough? But he gets charmed up, and TSM. Control of these objectives on the map. So the pace from EG's side. Oh, Paranoia onto the bottom side of the map. JoJo already used Fate Seal, but Boogie flashing after. Wants to get the kill for TSM, but JoJo throws in the thumbs up. Nice try, bro. Better luck next time, as Evil Geniuses are going to win out on the turret pushing war on the top side. Yeah, nice. Ground. But if EG decide to bring multiple members, then, well, TSM might just have to answer on back. So Wild Turtle is kept here to make sure that Haunter has another buddy to make sure the turret does not go down. I think EG right now, since they saw the four picks, Looking for the turn, though. Sejuani ultimate is actually down, so Varus ultimate has to be a big playmaker in. Ah, uh, they got the charm down on the JoJo oh. gun, and he's gonna use Fate Seal to get out of there, but Unforgiven finds a trade on a Wild Turtle. Ruby oh is searching my. for JoJo, but JoJo's already safe, and he doesn't have teleport, but he's gonna get the recall off, and TSM have lost <laughs> both their jungler and their AD carry. And EG got everything that they wanted. They didn't even need to take the Baron, and they have a minion wave to work with. Maybe they can push for more, but it looks like they're just gonna return back to Baron. Yeah, that's why you're always looking for the turn and they actually get it there it comes a little bit in a different form with jojo going head first in yet again this time again he actually escapes with a sliver of hp and and ults out to the side unforgiven locking it down uh using his varus ultimate to complete that one and actually getting the pick then the rest of the team can just go pick up baron afterwards as jojo is he gonna look for the all in oh not quite not enough damage sante fairly quickly and Evil Geniuses on a 23-minute pace here. Should keep it up. Rotate back over to the other pushing lane. Yeah. Just do your 4-1 split push. And our Armeo actually goes for the dive. Glacial Prison, Paranoia, turns out the lights. Ruby goes golden. And it looks like the engage is stopped here for now from Evil Geniuses, but the pressure gives Nothing he can do by himself except watch. So Hexgate, arrival of Ruby. Armeo does have smite. Oh, do they actually want to fight this fight? I guess Armeo is cut off from the rest of the pack here. Evil Geniuses, though, give him a breath of life thanks to Ayla, and they turn the fight on its head. TSM thought that they were able to catch out Armeo, but he's too tanky to take down. Ruby is forced to flash over the wall, but JoJo's going to answer with a flash of his own as he slices him down to shreds. TSM now on the back foot. Evil Geniuses making their way through the mid lane. There's another dragon coming up in 20 seconds, but they're going to look for the push on the inhibitor instead. Rafa. This EG looking like they definitely deserve number one spot in the LCS. After this game, they will be alone in first until we get on their comps as well. You just don't have to be scared. Don't be scared. Tell me if you see one last. Tell me if you see one last. Give me TP ward. I'm after shot. I'm TPing, I'm TPing. I'm flying. I'm zoning Kaisa. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. I'm zoning Kaisa. We have midwave. I'm going. I'm going crazy. Yeah, yeah, we got it. We have midwave, okay? We can't mid them. They're fighting me. <laughs> the main call, don't be scared. I love it. <laughs> Watching it, I was thinking, oh, maybe Armel will just come over and smite the red buff, but they just wanted to fight the entire time, and they got it. 
Good chase. I have to say, Unforgiven, the Varus ultimate does so much there. BMO will keep vision control of... Actually... Revenge? Do they have a pick on the Revenge? Maybe. He still has a Flash to work with, and he flashes the Emperor's Divide. He's gonna get tethered by that fear, but he's got the dominance. He's got enough life sustained, and now he's gonna turn it right back onto Ruby because he has the Core Trigger for the Omni Slash, and he just bites him down. Boogie now on the run. He has a Flash to work with, but Armeo is leading the charge here, so that Flash I don't think is just gonna do anything as JoJo still takes him out. Chime trying to get Wild Turner out, and Revenge is gonna go for a cheeky teleport just in their face because they want to close this game out fast. That is one angry crocodile. Evil Genius is inside the base. Can they finish it now? Mid inhibitor is already down. Bottom inhibitor down now. And all that's left. On to the Nexus turret. First one falling to Evil Geniuses. Haunts are doing everything he can to stall it out. Uh, they, they find one on Armeo, but it easily gets traded on back onto Haunter. And the number advantage for Evil Geniuses is enough so that they can lay waste to the final remains of TSM's base. And while we did expect it, it's still always a damn good sight to see Evil Geniuses dominating the LCS Summer Split with another win in Week 3. The value pickups here all coming together on Evil Geniuses, and they are your number one team in the LCS. And actually walk it forward, very straightforward though. They've got their hard engaged with Sejuani and, and Rakan to try and make some space for those double AD carries. Team Liquid say, nice hard engage. We've got King. These are only 600 damage smites, so it's not low enough. Piotr's yeah. by himself. Yeah, and he doesn't have flash, so he's forced to use the ball break to leash. get out. And now, yeah, TY for leash. Uh, FlyQuest should be able to secure this. Aspika does have smite. And that's first dragon over for FlyQuest. No one goes down yet from either team, but he finds the charm in the Prince, but it's a beautiful cleanse that gets him out. The rest of FlyQuest are able to walk out scot-free. One to get priority into River, too, and Summit is losing it, oh, so saw. Summit is toast. Yeah, he slammed him. He got the double slice and dice ah. with the Glacial Prison and the Permafrost is beautiful timing as well. First blood over for FlyQuest, and Harry's in a world of trouble because he's been They're rattled doing it. FlyQuest! They're doing it! 2-0 start! Buster shot. Maybe he can just punt Pioshek out if he gets close for a threat here. But now Vulcan turns it on. The charm from the quickness and the grand entrance knocks up Pioshek. He's got nowhere to run, but Core JJ with the Breath of Life tries to give Pioshek a way out of there, but Prince cuts him off with the Feather Storm and the Blade Caller. Now they got Harry and Yawn on the other side fighting Vikla two for nail. It's a trade, and Spika's still alive with the Dragon reset, and Vic Spika might be too low to take this Dragon by himself, so FlyQuest have to dip. Core JJ still on the right side of the map. Impact punts out. Okay. They claim the prize in the end. Uh, I mean, any Ash build is going to be a little bit le okay. Summon might be in trouble. This is a one on three. He gets the double slice and dice, glacial prison, and the charm, and the quickness, and everything. I mean, fly quests are just making. Definitely just seems like a dance between the both teams of just maintaining wave control and just fighting for vision. Push on the bottom side of the map as the next objective is going to be that third dragon of the game. This is Infernal. And it would be nice to acquire more adaptive force bonus percentages as the further the game goes on. Boom, demolished. Impact still gets the turret. Harry down to 50% health. Just keeps on eating onto the minions. Taxi up to that arch, though. See how good it is. Oh! Oh, Vikla, they pop the Dominus. And now Vikla has nowhere to run unless he still has a jump. He uses it after and he has the flash, but Core JJ might cut him off. The soccer ball interrupts him. Mid tower here. Recall pretty early for Summit on bottom lane. So TL gonna go for the reset. At this point, and Spika, no Glacial Personizer. There's no way for him to start a fight right for FlyQuest. Thought Impact was gonna try to look for something cheeky Maybe. when TL has been able to get those strong early game leads. While in spring, it was a weakness for them not being able to close it out. Summer, they've done it. They're burning it down decently fast. Spika's here on the river. I don't know if oh, they can get gonna... it. Okay. He had a blade. All of their tools there. And they got nothing. FlyQuest deny them. FlyQuest even take from them mid turret too. That charm to do it. And then late game happens. And when late game mistakes occur, it doesn't matter how well you've been doing for the first 20 something minutes of the game. The death timers are so long. Impact, you gotta not die, buddy. TL are doing everything they can to take down this tank and Impact is still living through it. Harry's looking so for- So he would have to put himself into dangerous 
point blank range to threaten Team Liquid at a deficit in a numbers advantage. Team Liquid are still on the Baron. Spikla is remaining in vision. Spikla just forces it. Oh, the with the charm connects! He was looking for the butcher shot, but Harry steps back on up with the. Enough to get Dragon at number three. If they can collect Infernal yeah, Soul for the rest of TL to finish off those members. Summit is in. Aye, they didn't have vision and he throws him himself in there, but they stopped the Baron take for now. Faye is onto the back line here of FlyQuest. Vi Vulcan is dead, but they already took out Yawn, so now it's just up to Harry to see if he can output damage. Pioshik is gone as well. There's no smite for FlyQuest. They should be able to burn it down. They have the smite advantage for Spika. They just need to bully off the rest of the team. Liquid and FlyQuest, it looked dicey there. Vikla's going in again. Yes, sir. This time he'll have a stasis to protect him. Oh, but they're looking and they find the target that they want. But Vulcan is still getting out alive. Summon has the TP flank. Harry can look over the wall. Spirit rushing in, following up on Summit's engage. Vulcan has already been taken out. They get the Vault Breaker. Impact is forced to flash away. Harry can still follow up with another charm if he can get in range, but he's already used all three Spirit Rush's charges and Impact still gets out alive. Good denial. Steadfast presence there from Impact to keep the losses at just Vulcan going down. Teleport around in ah. Harry's face. Oh, it's impact. And Harry, I don't think he has the damage equipped to take down this Poppy, especially now that she's full HP and there's no spirit rush. And that is the shutdown for impact. Impact says, nice, nice tank busting build. <laughs> with the entries, with the Void Staff. Nice little chase from him. Harry on the top side looking for the flank, but I believe that can, they saw him enter to that side. Blast comes available as well. Yeah, they saw. <laughs> Object permanence is not a problem for FlyQuest. They remember where he is. And Impact is marking that right side of the flank. They look for the charm and the spirit rush in, but he keeps up the steadfast presence, so he denies one charge in. But Team Liquid have the health advantage on their front line, so they push out FlyQuest, and that is soul secure. <laughs> Team Liquid, they should be able to get a tower too. That's some more money. Their carries are catching up a little bit in levels. Bicklin and uh, uh -oh. Prince still have one extra, but Bicklin's about to go down. Yeah, they Vault Breaker in. They don't even need the Cease and Desist. They just walk up. Impact. Could you send a Keeper's no. Verdict and knock them out? But the Baron is already secured. And they're going to look for the fight in the turn. The Charm, the Quickness. Bicklin and Spikla come in for reinforcements. But no one can access Yawn into the back line. If he keeps firing, then he's out of there. But he's forced to flash because Fly Quests are able to take out the front line. Baron Buff is From that moment on, TL know, hey, we, we have to abandon ship. We got to get out of here. Everybody try and escape. Wave, Vikla getting an early access to the minion wave, trying to get wave prio guaranteed. Elder spawns in 17 seconds, summon engages onto impact, but he's not doing really any damage to this guy. As the rest of FlyQuest now speeding on in as a group, trying to get first access into the dragon, but waiting to see if Team Liquid step too far forward. You can fish for a Vulcan engage, for a Glacial Prison from Spika. Kyosha trying to look for a really long flank, but Impact is marking him. And now they have a time to just burn down the dragon because Pioshik oh. is nowhere near. If you burn down the Elder Dragon, and Pioshik doesn't get in range, but now the time is starting to dwindle down. 6,000 HP, Pioshik can't get in range, looking for the Vault Breaker. The Impact on the left side, Glacial Prison is thrown out. They look for the engage Vulcan right into the front line. Impact goes right on in. Prince is free, firing, 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 firing all these feathers. No one is touching Vulcan. No one is touching Prince. Harry's trying to look for the back way, but Prince is undetected, but oh, Yon takes out a full stretch, Vulcan down! They find impact! Prince, Prince rushes forward! He still has the feather storm to use it! And Prince steps up, it is huge! Could this be oh, the time? FlyQuest fans, do they get to rejoice? Prince steps up and takes out Team Liquid! <laughs> All right, Summit's here. He wants to do something crazy. He's got Flash, teleported in No Mary. way, no way, it's gone. Elder Dragon run, is gone. Run, 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 get out of there. Elder means you get Baron means you get to push hard towards TL's base. Okay, slowly but surely, can they get inside? TL, no, we don't want to fight Elder. We want to wait it out. One more minute left on this Elder. And for FlyQuest, that means it's free access into the base. Inhibitor one falls in their favor. Oh, be careful about any little bits of poke damage as well. FlyQuest get number one on top side. Number two falling very quickly. And they still have 45 seconds. The time looks good for them. Aaron. Last ditch effort maybe from Team Liquid could be the only hope they have to salvage this game. FlyQuest on the brink of ending the losing streak, of ending the memes as FlyQuest.
They need one more Nexus turret, and now it's just an empty Nexus. Can they hit it? Team Liquid we will do everything to block them out. FlyQuest are falling. Do they have enough damage? Do they have enough members? The Elder Dragon Pump is it. enough! FlyQuest end the streak, and they reverse momentum. Aggressive here for FBI. Pop the shield on the Kaisa as he goes in for the dive bomb. Only thing to worry about. 30, but this time making stops at top lane, stops in mid lane as well to at least offset some pressures. They look for a little bit of love damage, but Hal Fox is too chunked out. He can't really assist in the gank. Mm -hmm. River walks through, but Ignar's here first. And they turn it around. They're just going to flash right on top of Gory. And because of how Iron Q's work, everyone gets a free access pass onto Gory for first blood. And now the rest of Golden Guardians have to retreat. Yeah, they got to get out of there because teleport was used from Dokla to mid lane. And his wave stuck up on top side. Uh -oh. They get the chase. And River, he still has flash to play with. Looks like he's walking on out thanks to who he stunting energy. Goodbye, Johnny. Goodbye, Steven. <laughs> Contrax making a repeat gank on the top side of the map. Licorice, Counter-Strike stun is already used, and the Q connects and clean stuff from Energy. I love it. Energy have gotten the kills, but Golden Guardians starting out and should be able to secure the first objective of the game. I don't think Contrax is going to chance for a steal. From bottom lane and linking up with an Ivern as an engaged support, you just feel like you are god mode. You can jump in. Rel already has big shields. They're going for the plan to Licorice. Trying to wait out the Counter-Strike stun from Dokla, and then he flashes in to secure the stun, but they cannot link up Daisy and Ivern's root. But Ignar, he's going to flash stun Boom. into the crash down, and the Ignite ticking down. Ignar takes that kill for himself. I would say, up on the horse. See how fun it is to jungle now, but... Uh-oh. Well, Contracts needs to hop on out. Flashing out of danger. Nature's Wrath makes its way across multiple members of energy, but it's a double teleport from the solo lanes of Dokla and Palafox as they want the chase. They are hungry for blood, and FBI using the Killer's Instincts to dive onto Gory. Gonna recall off, but is forced to use the teleport now because now all members of energy have shown up. They're just doing it to guarantee, but the crash down into the Magnus Storm does not hit anyone. River gets out of there alive. Dragon is reset and into the back line. FBI is trying to leap in there, but Contrax is also blinking down on HP. FBI has already found one, but FBI has got to put out the damage against Gory, who's routing him off. But Daisy is walloping and punching him down, but it's still not enough damage. Dokla will slice and be the ender of multiple members of Golden Guardians as Contrax now on the run. Stick says looking for another reset with the rocket jump, but cannot get enough auto attack damage. What a fiesta! from here. Golden Guardians energy are just scrapping on both sides and Contrax does not go <laughs> down. They do have Maokai ultimate. You can drop turret aggro with your W if your Maokai wants to go start out tanking tower and save the twisted advance, but they lead with ult. Dominus is available. He tries to flash away under tower, but it's a nice bonk and well-played dive from Golden Guardians, yeah. but the last turret shot is enough to find Licorice. And now Golden Guardians are on the run. Can Contracts find the Root Maker? Gets the smite for the slow river. Just getting auto-attacked to death before he lands the easy Q, and it's an easy revenge kill. But they get a top side turret. Looks like Jace is going to counter push on bottom side. Now, the thing I was just mentioning about Twisted Advance dropping turret aggro, that was also the problem that they led into there. Since Maokai led with the W, it, it trolled Licorice a little bit, and he instantly got turret aggro being only two turret shots from death. So him going down. Yeah. In that in that scenario, you probably want to just walk up as Maokai following your ultimate and cue them. Oh man, is he gonna die again down here for? Oh no, the teleport is coming in. Get the turret. Douglas like, hey buddy, the remember the dive, the 2v1? <laughs> well, I got three on one for you this time and there is no way out for Mr. Eric Ritchie. And Valfox cleans up Rift held on bottom side to push even deeper. Oof. Another one. Secondary turret. Mini wave up there, so should be plenty of time for a reset after Dragon for energy to defend and not let Golden Guardians get too much back. I mean, at the blast, and they're going right back to it. Here we go, round two. This time, Gorian and Huhi are in the inside of this river track. Cal Fox is separated, but the Magnus Storm is going to cut off Huhi, and Huhi just gets blown up by energy. That's a member gone from Golden Guardians, but they're looking for the re engage with the Nature's Wrath. Doklas spies some space. 
Right now for Daisy. the front line, Daisy is still tanking up and maintaining aggro of Baron, so the Baron does not drop, but River has oh. the blast cone. He can get He's in fighting. over a steal, the steal! It doesn't happen! Jokla's the one that secures it. River's got nowhere to go because he doesn't have flash. Gory looks for a Hail Mary and a Power Fox, but he flashes away, and now Gory's just sent himself to die at the hands of Energy, but Stix A looking for the reset. Looker is oh. blocking it for Counter-Strike. He can set up for Stix A. He's looking for more Buster Shots and more Rocket Jumps, but he hops away. Energy are going to get out alive. Looker is trying to get together any bit of a round. Can he get the flank? Teleport. There's no flash on any Energy carry. Dude, he spotted. He flashes in, but he gets the Death Charge right into the back line. Conchex is knocked up, and they've blown up Dokla, and that's the main front line gone for Energy. That's the Dragon going over to Golden Guardians. Who he with the big flank golden guardians cash in on the objective bounty so even though they lost lost out around baron they get the dragon gets it and dokla barely lives at the end too as he was buster shot it out gory the last chase down and you know licorice is gonna be a flash follow but pal fox and the rest of energy still coming to town with the baron buff pushing down these turrets inhibitor tower falls now Thanks to the Baron buff, two empowered cannon minions making quick work of the inhibitor. And that is the first step of laying waste. Keep up the pressure around mid to make sure there's no counter play. So very easily collected by energy. Top side tended to Sorry. provide so much. Ooh, he's in fog. That's oh, yeah, and now he's exposed, but FBI is all by himself. But he uses the killer instinct to jump on the other side of the wall. Now, who he is looking sheepish. He's going to find Ignar, and that's just a tank support trade. Unless Ignar actually gets out alive, the explosive charge, the shield from Contracts keeps him alive. And a double shield just adds insult to injury. Golden Guardians find themselves without their junglers. They look for the engage. FBI is going to clean it up here. Dokla slices down Stixay. The Root Maker roots him on up. The flash, he can't get away out of that win. FBI finds him and he's gonna look for more yeah go for the end go for the end maybe energy everybody's up no stick say no who he river on 13 they're going for wave? a flank yeah all right they can just go top side though the inhibitor's already exposed up here they've got plenty of minions to work with okay maybe maybe no ends there's still two two people down they can just retreat to baron a little bit safer of a play grab your inhibitor retreat back over to the baron then return with the baron is any magic on the side of Golden Guardians. Nice little juke boots from River, but he's going to need more than that. Easy secure for energy. Bear. Nicely done, but Licorice is now going to jump on them in the aftermath. Goes Golden, and it's a teleport coming in from Gory. He has Ember Survive. He has Flash. Can he catch them out by surprise? FBI is taken out of the fight. Pal Fox as well. Gory swoops on in. Looks like Dokla is going to be left to the wolves of Golden Guardians. He's going to sustain himself as long as he can, but I don't think he's getting out of this one. No teleport available and no real way to run out of this one. At least it is consolation prize for Golden Guardians. The 6A will get himself another kill, but the Baron buff was secure for energy, and that is inching slowly closer and closer. The Trents are attacking. <laughs> the ends are going to fall. Now the inhibitor tower is going to fall, and now energy are making their march into the base. Inhibitor should be the next target here as Dokla is handling Licorice in the middle lane. Inhibitor still down for Golden Guardians on the top side of the map. We're in. We're in. They got the brushes, they got the extra on-hit damage. Redemption is used just to give them a little bit of extra health, but the Empowered Candy Minion hiding in the brush. Oh, it stopped on attacking the inhibitor. They're gonna have to walk back on up, and Azir has set up his tower. Gory is gonna use that for extra defense. Dokla has popped the Dominus, trying to sustain as much damage as he can. Has a GA, but he's in the middle of three. They have Daisy trying to front line, and Dokla gets to walk. They up. know this is only Cloud Drake number three, too. So, Golden Guardian it does get away for now. Ooh. I mean, Stixie is definitely came with the, the blue suede shoes. He is dancing around he's a in. lot of... Oh, he's in there. Who? He gets blown up. And now can Golden Guardians follow up in the engage? Otherwise, the support trade will be for nothing. They find Dokla. So, so support for top laner is great for Golden Guardians if they can main battle lines here. Engage for Golden Guardians, but he gets melted as they're getting the pick on Dokla. In the aftermath, a second or two of extra CC does mean a lot. Could be the difference maker as they find a pick on the Licorice, but he goes golden with the Zonias, but he's still separated from everyone else. But he leaps on over. Ignar follows up. Licorice is gone. The Magnus Storm under multiple members. Then it's the trade back onto Ignar's life. Golden Guard. trade. Last time around, it was reversed as far as the teams go, but energy. Now they're poking around again. Oh, FBI goes for the Killer Instinct. He gets locked up, but they take out Huhi first. Gory 6-8, they have to clean up the damage, but FBI's gone. And now it's just Palafox, Dokla, 
dashing in, but Gorin goes gold at the right time. Doku loses all of his HP. He's forced to retreat. The dragon instead. That's going to be a Baron for Dragon oh, Soul oh Trade. Cloud Dragon picked up in trade for Baron. This for sure is going to be our longest game. Kobe, I'm calling it. This is certified banger status right now. Golden Guardians again, but whoever's getting the pick here is always getting killed afterwards. Looking for Licorice, but the Counter-Strike dodges the stun here. Okay. Ignite oh. dodges out on the dredge line, and Dokla is way too far on enemy lines. He doesn't have a GA to oh. work with. The shield isn't going to live through the explosive charge, and the GA still keeps him alive. They didn't realize he still had it. Ignar now on in danger. He gets taken out by Gory. Golden Guardians have with the slow and insidious killer. It got the catch that got them the trailing kills, and now Golden Guardians with Baron. Can they be the ones to truly leave a lasting mark? We have officially passed the duration of the, our previous game. So back to back longest games of the split. This is our new longest game. 907. Who he has been looking for flanks all game long, and this time does he find Palfox here? Licorice can fall up in the engage. Palfox doesn't have flash. The GA's pop. Surely Palfox goes down, and Energy are trying to burn down through the front line. But wait, Palfox gets out. He had flash, and now Dokla gets to with. Oh no, but he can't survive it. It's too much damage for Golden Guardians. Energy now on the run. Palfox has to retreat. He has to reset and base. Elder is up with a minute death timer. That pick, that kill, that flank from Huhi finds the kill necessary for Golden Guardians to have the big advantage. Elder plus Baron available, and they're trying to cover both. Contracts makes a run. He oh, hits the Q. He hits the Q, and then Gory has to go gold in the crash down. Do they have the Magnus Turn? They don't even need it. They just have the damage necessary to take him out. Oh. Lucas is in big trouble. He goes golden. The guard goes to a plate. It's going to be enough to keep him alive. Steal Elder? No, they didn't. They secured Elder. Golden Guardians still have it to work with, but it is still a numbers advantage for Energy. Yeah, that was a great call from Energy. They know that there's going to be people going for the Elder Dragon, so contracts as Energy are desperate in their time of need. He finds it. He gets the pick. He gets the Q on Degori. They find the follow-up. Ignar is there. They get their kills. Three members from Golden Guardians down, and Energy turn it into Baron, and they turn it into Siege. Top side is open. Can they finish? The face, Elder Dragon buff. It's just the Golden Guardians bottom lane standing against the full might of Energy. 20 seconds left on Gori and River. 20 seconds can feel like an eternity here if NRG just close out the game right here, right now. Teleport is coming in from Dokla. They burned down one Nexus turn easily. This could be an energy. They had to fight through thick and thin, but they finally did it for the longest game of the LCS. Keep himself safe. You know, you called out Diamond being one of those engaged support players. It is going to be the Leona. And that is a pretty deadly duo down in the bottom line. Playbreakers have been looking more aggressive. Oh, somebody going to go all out. Has the dominance, but Rich taking a lot of damage. Gonna get the call to Meek. He's so low. One more auto. Someday he'll pick up first blood against Rich. The tier here looking to scale potentially. Busio has no flash. They're gonna look for it. Flash in. A lot of damage to the pullback. Gotta be careful. But Busio, he is getting burst down by Tomo. Nice. Big beefy front lines with Nautilus being one of them. Early game, that ain't the case. Yeah. He's a very squishy champion, but bot lane, Double Up and Tomo are fighting it out. You There's no the flash. flash. You gotta get the damage. The flash oh. in from Double Up. What a play to take down Tomo. Right. As Double Up said, already used the flash there. And the pulling in to get that root was really nicely done. Cool. Cool. Not gonna be able to stop this one. I thought Quib would have been able to delay him at least one more time, but it seems like they're happy to let him go. Just gonna try to take down that tower. Should be going down pretty easily here for Quid now. So yes, they do get the dragon on the bottom side, but it's not really an even trade because no. you're losing the turret, you're losing the herald. Yep. Mid lane tier one is low, bot lane tier one is low. So it's a very easy play here. 400 Thieves in these next couple minutes. Go to one lane, drop the Herald. That tower is gone. Go to the next lane, knock it down. I mean, Double is going to kill this for free, so you can get the three outers here within the next couple minutes if you want and really explode this gold lane toss. And with him behind, he's been kind of relegated to this role where he's been stuck under tower a lot of time. There's the Herald bot as expected. More gold. So another one going to go down here. Someday could look for Jensen. Jensen knows it, so he's going to have to back off. No, there were a couple members of Dignitas top lane, so it could have been a little bit wary. But the bigger thing is the fact that second charge goes through for 100 Thieves. They're going to take that tier two in the bot lane. That is a huge... Man, I, th I thought it was a big swing of gold. Positioning to fight for it. Well, keep in mind, it is the Hextech Rift, and Diamond's already back on the field. It's down low, but look at Busio on the other side. That's the Hex Gate a little bit too late from Diamond. They got a lot of damage on the double up, and Rich wants to re-engage. But someday, keeping him at bay, but they burst down Busio as Rich got a little bit of attention coming in from 100 Thieves, looking for his way back. 
back into the fight. 4v5. Closer's gonna be the target, but he dashes away. And look at Diamond. He's got the flank. Hex deck over the wall, but it's absorbed by someday. With the sun coming on to one. They've got the feather storm. The double lift barely survives. Back to the turret. Only he the in. He had no cleanse, so he had to be on point with it. Someday now looking to try to turn things around. Has Diamond stepped too far? A little bit too far, but maybe they wanted to bait that win in because they got a lot of damage and they found the poke on the quid. All out on the rich. The rich gonna die to someday. As they look for the poke on a double up, it will be traded two for two at the moment with Busio back on the rip. They can toss. Probably the best play they could hope for right there. Yeah, they do get a couple kills. It looks like they'll get a tower off the back of this as well. So that's gonna be pretty nice, evening up the gold a little bit, but at the end of the day, 100 Thieves did still stop the dragon stack. Nail your poke, you've gotta be perfect with your gauges. Uh, you have to really be on point when you are playing from a deficit like this, but it's Busio finding Diamond. Diamond, though, could be in trouble. That's gonna be the depth charge into the back line. Jensen got a lot of attention, but it's gonna be trade of support for support. I've Rich, the top laner, so they fight in the mid lane. A little bit of poke back and forth, but it's gonna be the kill onto Maokai, and that's a Shurima shuffle pull back in from Quid. It's gonna annihilate Dignitas. No trade onto Quid. He goes golden. Rich tries to get one back. The Croc does bite down onto the bird, but still dies regardless. Yeah, they're top gonna be. Lane, they can all roam the take down this tier two. Yeah, gonna be moving back and forth between top and mid. They have the push in on top. Too many Dignitas members were committed towards mid lane, trying to push off double lift from that mid lane tier two, but this is really difficult and somebody's gonna face check. Trying for something, but it's the tanky members of 100 Thieves are going into. The flash is away, the depth charge on Tomo. They can pull back in Rich, and Rich has to slice and dice away. A lot of damage onto Dignitas. Even if nobody fell, the turrets will. Yeah, the turrets will fall as Dignitas does get chunked down there. Looking at him right now, he's working on... I'm not exactly sure which item he wants to get first because he got that... One mistakes from 100 Thieves at this point in closer. May have found Diamond. Oh, no, Diamond out of position. Burst down pretty easily, too. And without that engaged tool that you can rely on, there's no pick that you could hope for on to double lift and quit outside of the poke from Tomo and Jensen. Yeah, gonna be tough now. It is a 5v4, the massive gold advantage here. 100 Thieves gonna be pushing in. Looking for it, will die potentially. It's gonna be the Nature's Grasp with the Dominus not popped just yet. They got a lot of damage onto the back line onto Quid, but Rich actually taken down. He didn't even get a pop the ult. No, he did, but he still died regardless. Pretty low though. This is a little bit dicey. Oh. Look at Quid's health. Look at somebody's yeah, health. I mean, that. if they can land the poke. They're poking out, but they don't realize that they were just committed to that Baron. So it is taken by 100 Thieves. It's Dignitas try to go for the Solar Flare. It does get double left into the air. He goes. Nobody on top of him just yet. Waiting for the ult, waiting for anything. The poke. The dragon where we're likely to have oh, our next no. contest, oh, but no. Diamond too far out. Too far out with the Hex Gate as well. They can chase that down anywhere. This is not your territory. You might feel safe in the jungle, but it's all 100 Thieves. They bought up everything. They have a monopoly here, and Diamond, you're getting hit by the wall, and as they go over the wall looking for Rich, the Rich will be able to get away. Getting out on the map and trying to establish vision so you can have some hope at a comeback play. But unfortunately for him, he's easily caught up by someday. Does cost the same time. Mid and bot are going to be the two first. So they get a lot of damage there. Solar Flare dodged away by Closer. And with the Cannon Minion buffed up by the Baron, that should be topple here any moment. And someday should take down mid too. Yeah, Jensen trying to push him off, dissuade him from going any farther forward. But someday looking to potentially turn that around. Got another dash away from the ult. Jensen barely alive, and the root comes in from Santorin. But what can you do here as Dignitas? They just don't have that angle. They're so far behind 12,000 gold. Three Hextech dragons picked up by 100 Thieves. And they're going to lose two inhibitors without barely a fight. Yeah, it's pretty rough. They're going to see if they can TP back in as well, TPing over towards top lane. Going to try to triple and hit them, but they're already knocking down the Nexus turrets, and the only angle for Dignitas might just be going next. Yeah, it might be a GG go next, but Rich is on the other side looking for the flank as they already lost the tree. It's way too late. They just push you away, Rich. You might have flashed on top of them, but we knew this game was over for a while. 100 Thieves, they've had the lead, and they're now making sure they take every Dignitas member down before they topple the Nexus. They'll all oh, not get Jensen, but they'll still pick up the win. It's a quadra kill for double as the finish. Thing. Try to play, you know, split up the map a little bit, but. Uh, it's going to be all in here for Cloud9. They are all looking to go one direction. They're looking for that dive. It is going to be Treats lucky. He's going to be spotted if he goes into that brush. They try to use the Hex Flash. They got the pull on Sven. Crash down away. Even with Ignite and the stun for Treats. He is low. Trying to slow him down with the Graviton. The Flash in to pick up First Blood. You're right, Azale. It's before I do like how they kind of shook up what I expect. The bot lane won out. So I expected them to go arms with the Dragon. Kaisa. 
uh, as well as you know fudge anytime he's in mini is pretty good too Ooh, right there getting a little bit of punish solo though taking his own damage back and forth that's fudge kind of chasing him out in mini form good chase down potential even oh, hobby for for this one he's in a lot of trouble and he's about to go mega the flash away the flash forward from fudge and even landing the bonerang and that's gonna be a solo kill for fudge we have a 500 gold lead on the top side all of this farm is being lost here also five are down to bots are gonna look for a fight that's gonna be a 3v3 there is a tv top lane but the tv's in the bot lane are gonna be most important because the gonna die before anything happens they're gonna trade back on tactical that's the guy with the gold you got the stun coming in pension back immortals on the run where can treats go the cow about to be made into some burgers as Cloud9 pick up the fight. TP, he got the push on top. He makes first move. So if Immortals fight now, they're going to be down a man. He's about to go Mega as well. That's going to be a big thing. And they're all corralled against the wall. Sven went into the back line. But look at the damage they got on the Kenby. No recess for Immortals. Tree tries to get away. But that's going to be Fudge into the back line. All out on top of him. Trying to pull him back in. They've got the charm. They do trade one for two at the moment. But Immortals, they're the one. That... Well played fight here from Cloud9. Again, they had first move. If you look at the minimap, it's all about the move here from Cassante. He's trailing the play. Could actually impact them massively in the sidelines against Fudge. Yeah, it can, right? And then that's one of the difficulties, and they're going to look for Fudge now. That's a flash away, but they already got the season to sit. All out. Solo tries to dash away, but they just got way too much follow-up, and it's a kill rampage even for Berserker. Yeah, Solo going to go down in the side lane there, caught out. Fudge was up towards the top lane, you know, covering up there. Well, it's going to be traded back for the tier one in mid. But Fudge is going to be working on your tier one top as well. So everything that Immortals gets, Cloud9 is just getting even more. Yeah, they get double your money that you get and even get another charge onto the inhibitor turret in the bot lane. The position of Immortals, they can immediately collapse on. I mean, Immortals just have no vision in their own jungle. Nicely smited away, though, nice. by Kenby. Oh, but Treats and a little bit of danger. He tried to go back in. They even used the Moonlight Vigil, the stun, but it's on the tanky member. Sven goes into the back line, but look at Blabber. They've got everyone corralled here. Berserker shows up out of nowhere for a double kill. Everyone's flashing away, but they're picking up the kills. Solo fighting to get Fudge, and we already know how that matchup goes. It is all Cloud9 tactical. You can't even get out of this one. You're pinched, you're locked in, and you're triple killed by Fudge. Fudge gets it called out, followed up beautifully by Flabber. Berserker came out of nowhere to clean up a couple uh -oh. kills, but now Fudge in a little bit of danger. About to go mega three men, nor he's got a lot of more damage than I expected, but not enough health to survive oh. three members. Yeah, that was about one auto away from killing Kenby. That actually Who I don't would think they're, they're aware of it whatsoever. So Tipper's even going to be dropped to tank this up. Berserker's on three items with the Rage Blade, and the Baron is gone. Immortals thought they had found something. They got a kill. Getting themselves a turret, but so much has been lost out yeah. from them. Even with that attempted play. Forward, I think he would have been spotted. And M M S, you know, is just pushing out bot. Berserker getting really Okay, Berserker is playing very aggressive there. A little bit trolling. Goes over to the wall with the Killer Instinct, but followed up by Balulu. He uses the cleanse away, but the re-engage coming in from Blabber, and there's Fudge. Flash, only Nora on the one person. This is Kenby. The Kenby knocked into the air. He's blown up. He's out of there. Look at the kill they got on the Blabber. Immortals are turning this one. Because they are ahead as far as the health and the resources. There are concerned, but Blabber does go down. Berserker, it looked like he was trying to pile into the fight. And this is one of their tendencies that can sometimes happen. Oh, oh tactical Tibbers. He's chasing them down. He's pummeling for tactical <laughs> and burning them alive. Miss Annie. And tactical and not able to find anything here. They're going to lose the mid lane inhibitor tower. Fudge pushing up through top and Cloud9 closing in. We're only 23 minutes in. The inhibitors have been cracked. The first one going to fall. And they can even just move up to wave. The next one had not yet arrived, so now Mortals can move down towards bot. Look to clear this, but oh! Flash for flash. They are going to get a little bit of damage back. Pulling back, Flapper with all out as well, but that's going to be season six. They're going a long journey back into the base. Solo will be the first casualty. Norald, then the follow up Berserker, looking for the kill. They've got treats. He tried his best, but he's just not got enough there. The rest of Immortals, they're corralled back into their base. They'll lose another inhibitor of this one in the bot lane. Yeah, it's going to be all she wrote. I think Berserker gets Open charmed up. But the cleanse right back out of there. And Berserker, he's just too far ahead. Nobody can stop him. Cloud9, untouchable. They'll take this game. They'll retain the tie first place with evil geniuses as they crash down inside of the Fountain of Immortals because they have got the game. Another solid game here from Cloud9. This 